Welcome. This is our press conference about Sinoprobe, an unprecedented view inside Earth's largest continent. And we'll have four speakers, although one has not arrived yet. But we're going to go ahead and hopefully he'll arrive during the press conference. Um, in the order in which they'll speak, we have Xu Wen Dong, who's with Sinoprobe. He's from the Chinese Academy of Geological Sciences in Beijing. Queen Qing Tian Lu, he's also <laughs> Qing Tian, oh, Qing Tian, oh, Qing Tian yeah, Liu. Sorry about that. Also with Sinoprobe at the Chinese Academy of Geological Sciences and Institute of Mineral Resources in Beijing. Mian Liu of the University of Missouri is not here yet. And Simon Klemperer, he's professor of geophysics and of geological and environmental sciences at the Department of Geophysics at Stanford. Uh, good morning. So it's a very pleasure to uh, get this opportunity to introduction about the side of So beginning of our side of to talkings, I would like to share some of the background in the world. Uh, as a background of deep exploration in the world in the, different, in the past uh, 30 and 40 years and uh, lots of uh, projects and uh, completed of the uh, deep exploration in a different uh, continent. This is, is a cocoa book in the United States. And the second round of exploration in the United States uh, Earth score. And the Euro probe in the last uh, centuries and the eight and the ten, nine centuries. The, as a decoup in the from uh, 19 uh, 19, uh, 92, 1990 is uh, for by, hosted by the Germany. As a Russian, uh, as a, okay, is also to do lots of exploration for deep resource field. Here is the largest uh, the project from Canada. It's a resource probably in the last two, 20, three, uh, 23 years. As, uh, as for Australia, as a deep program. Now we turned our solar probe and start for the 2008 to the, um, last year. So this is, is a deployed maps for show uh, our project, what we are doing. Now we just finished in the all the uh, stuff. For red lines, just uh, it's a deep seismic profiling. And uh, it's a red cycle, just is an empty area for for covered all the continent and the blue squares are in situ and the stress measurement in the special of activity areas in covered uh, of the Wenchuan earthquakes in the, happened in the 2008. And so and the yellow squares are just the 3D for large squares of deposits. And so and the blue, st blue stars just the scientific drilling, yeah, as a size. So this is our silo probe. It's, uh, it's um, all arms to reviews of compositions, structures, and the uh, evolution of a continental resource feasibility of a Chinese continent. So this is the first phase since uh, 2008. So now we just uh, completed by this year, and uh, it's a big uh, budget, uh, around and uh, 200 US dollars you know, for five years. So some is uh, key scientific problem we must be focused by this uh, project. So now I give is a very short time to just to show our conclusion. Uh, in the past five years, we finished uh, for deep seism seismic reflection profiling across the different tectonic units and the total length of the more than 6,000 kilometers across the Tibetan plateau and the South China, North China, North East China as well. And meanwhile, we also come parallel of this seismic profiling we just used of different technology for such as the ground boundary seismic station and MT and uh, other technology. So next one is we finished uh, in the MT area, uh, covered all the China continent and with different intensity. 
in the in the lost China and the Tibetan as more densities for one by one degrees and the other other place just covered four by four degrees or only is for testing for the MT areas. So this is uh, geochemistry and the baselines I cover all the Chinese cutting, not only is base basins and the cover regions and also is outcrop in all the China. So uh, finally, we just got is a uh, new uh, 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 covered all the seven eight elements in the lectures and the occurs. So we finished uh, in the different size, uh, different journeys, scientific journeys, and uh, totally more than twenty thousand meet, and uh, some uh, for stress measurement in the boreholes and uh, 15 boreholes. So finally we published, now uh, up to now we've uh, published uh, in the more than 500 papers and uh, applied uh, 19 patents and with 15 ones inventions and 18 studio types approved and also 21 ones software copyright and we got it. So now we take some examples and the preliminary result for our exploration. This is the first is MT area. So MT area we I mentioned in the uh, uh, before the, and the different uh, densities in the North China and the Tibetan block very densities and one by one. So we get is emergence of the different levels and the conductivity and uh, in the from surface to the mantle. So this example is for the loss chain uh, is a different uh, sliced, different levels and uh, conductivity and uh, emergence. So next one is geochemistry baselines. It in, depends of the uh, world and the globe and the reference uh, network for chemistry and uh, cover all the, all the elements in the occurring the lectures and the seven, eight elements and uh, distributed in the uh, cover all the continent in China. Just like, yeah, sorry, uh, a lot of pictures and so missing. So, so and we did and the uh, long profiling and the uh, CDs and uh, for list and the uh, crust structures by the seismic, uh, special for reflecting seismic and uh, just the uh, uh, line. So we take examples of our results. So and the first time uh, finished in the seismic uh, reflection across and the Tibetan and the central Tibetan. So this our is profiling. So we first and uh, times get is uh, moho. So just show is the crust and the uh, boundary of the crust and the mantle is a moho surface. As the first time to, we got it as a moho dips by the reflection and exploration. So this is a very clear, it's a situs and for Mohus off-site in the Bangung Lujiang situs. And uh, we also is crossed as a kraton. Kraton means it's a very steep and uh, ancient block. So, oh no, sorry, it's uh, oh, this origin and uh, as uh, emergence of crust and uh, from top to mantle. It's a very complex of the reflector and the structures and uh, for all the crust emergence. It's, uh, it's part is in the northeast and the Tibetan. So this is also in the, is, uh, in the so intracontinent and the origin bed is uh, occurs in the Mesozoic, it's new, and the uh, originic bed is emerging crust. So here is Taiwan, and uh, is uh, by our uh, and the bread boundary, and uh, get is uh, velocity and the emerging for Taiwan is shoes, and uh, so uh, you Russia plate and the Philippine plate and the subduction interactions in these areas, and uh, also is uh, crust structure for. Is across and the largest met metagenic and out deposits and areas. As sure, use some 
level uh, in a crust structure and list those uh, structures. So this is a different of the, uh, it's a crust imaging by the reflection profile. Okay, it's, uh, we finally we get is 3D imaging for the large deposit. So that's a very important and obvious for our side probe is a fish of uh, as great demands of the for Chinese and uh, industrialization. Yeah. So here is show in situ the stress measurement in the monitors. Special this area just showed in the east boundary of Tibetan. So in everybody maybe remember is is a huge and earthquakes and occur in the 2008, the Wenchuan earthquake So now we just uh, uh, distributed the 10 and the deep holes and the stress measurement for after its earthquakes just uh, gave its adjustment and the state of the stress, uh, stress and recover system. And uh, this is our simulations and the platform for 3D structure and then dynamics of other, other uh, uh, crust and the resource field. As uh, our affiliation with China is a big group and also the international cooperation uh, organizations and the uh, different countries. So our uh, side probably is annual meetings different in every year. So we also host an uh, international symposium and uh, deep exploration for in uh, 2011. It's a very huge and uh, it's a meetings. So every year we just uh, participant of the AGU just show our different stages and the results since and 2009 uh, and this year and also joined and AGC and AGC and different. So we, our side probably is open as a project with a foreigner. So this is uh, our international expert teams give us advice for the uh, deep exploration uh, and most of from uh, the United States and Germany and Russian and Canada. So we very ref, uh, it's often to visit and uh, different institute in the abroad. And this is uh, emerging just cooperation with Germany, GFZ, and the International Continent Journey Project, and also is rushing uh, for federal engines of mineral resources. So okay, this is our center of a side probably for is. Uh, is often an uh, exchange with a foreigner. It's uh, different lectures from a foreigner invited to visit. And also host and uh, some short courses for resource evolution and uh, through times and uh, heard in the 2011 and the modern and uh, 20 and uh, 200 and the post postgraduate student and joined. So side probe is outreaches for publication for express our result for the society and especially for premier student and uh, as a publication in China. So this also is and the CCTV's news report our project in a different stages since in the 1920s. So that's our Side prop and uh, home pages and uh, is uh, just uh, up uh, just show uh, different languages China and English. So, so if you everybody want to know details about our side project, could be and uh, to watch this. So and the science and give us a news report about our side prop in this years. So. Uh, give some is uh, environment by the foreigner, foreign expert, and uh, give some assessment and uh, for opinion uh, comments about the side probably. So in the side probably is a deep exploration, the opening at the new times of geosciences, 
in the China and has been assessed to be one of the top 10 scientific and technology pro progresses in uh, 2011 by the Chinese Academy of Science and the Chinese Academy of Engineers as uh, last year. Thank you for your attention for just the minutes. We have time? We'll take the okay. Okay. Oh, okay, thank you. Mm. So, it's John Matter. Oh. Oh. So, this one. Hi, uh, thanks, Peter. Uh, I'm uh, so glad and honored to be here to attend the press conference. And my, my talk is about uh, some mineral research and exploration of uh, the Sinopur. And as I just mentioned by Professor Dong, the Sinopur family has nine sub-project. And the mineral-related research and exploration was listed as Sinopur 3. There are three major objectives of uh, sign number three. One is to study the tectonic background and the deep process of uh, major uh, semi-metallic general belt in the east of China. And the second uh, objective is to build 3D geologic model for all districts and to, to understand the deep structure uh, of uh, uh, all forming process. And also as aid for deep mineral exploration, and a third objective is to uh, uh, to test the modern new technologies in f in the uh, in its effective effectiveness for the deep mineral exploration. Uh, in the f four following uh, slides, I will show you the three major achievements. And the first achievement is uh, uh, through our Central Purpose 3, we have a better understanding of the intercontinental metallogeny. Uh, that is responsible for all formation uh, in the east of China. Let's take middle to lower Yangtze metallogenic belt as an example. Uh, this gelt is uh, very important in China. It contains more than 200 mineral deposit. Um, the, um, the agent data show that the mineralization event uh, was between 150 and 145 million three years. The, this period of time is corresponding to the second origin of the region, and uh, which is uh, uh, we thought which is the interplate origin. Uh, it's in particular it's the shift between compressive to the extension uh, tecton region. Um, so the question was, uh, the qu question is, oh, what is the deeper process for the intercontinental metallogeny? And we make a comparison with the anti-time metallogeny, and we want to answer this question to better understand the deeper process for the intercontinental metallogeny. Um, so this was our, uh, so, uh, in order to address that question, we have a, a huge amount of geophysical exploration, which include uh, a longer transect is just across this metallogenic belt and also more densely um, uh, geophysical profile. Uh, let's this is what we have found. Uh, the teleseismic tomography has found um, uh, the higher density and a body and also lower density body. The capital appeared just below the metallogenic belt, which is uh, good evidence to show this the lithosphere has second and delaminated. Um, so the second, this is a, a better parallel and salt pay, and it's uh, 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 quite consistent with our tomography uh, result. Uh, so this is uh, uh, a seismic re reflection result which is so in the past, uh, so in particular in the Yanshani Yan origin, uh, in the middle lower Yangtze region is a small uh, uh, so origin, 
and which the, we, we can find a many origin related structures, like a fold and a fold and a, and a duplex or something uh, happening there. We also found a very in interesting structure is that uh, the upper crust deformation, the lower crust, this is the decoupled. We, we found the crocodile structure is just, just below the metallogenesis of the belt, which is quite interesting. It's also evidence to show it's a, um, it, 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 it's a, uh, so originate. Um, so this, uh, so an, another problem is so we, we, we have found the multi magma system is uh, un underneath the volcanic basin. Um, so this is our mo model, uh, and we, we propose a model for intracontinental metallurgy, which includes several uh, so deep processes. This includes uh, intracontinental subduction, or uh, sub for stacking, or sink laser fair. Uh, some places for delamination or extension and uh, something like this. So this is uh, one uh, achievement. The second achievement is to build 3D geology model, real 3D geology model, and to have better understanding structure architecture for all districts, or a little, uh, a little more reliable deep tar target. Uh, so this is how we do it, and we first to, to do the 3D geophysics exploration is to include the intersecting geophysics profile and also regional gravity magnet data collection, and then we use gravity, data, uh, gravity magnet data inversion and to con construct the 3D mo model and to un understand the 3D structure of all region and also to, uh, uh, to help uh, to target the deep min the mineral region. Uh, so this is uh, several case steps. So this is a uh, 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 so one for example we have done in Tony or uh, re regions. This is uh, in Jiuzhi, uh, Jiuzhi mineral re regions. We have finished. So this is a, 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 an, another very important example. We have done the 3D model and also do the deep uh, the mineral tar target. We have the drill to test our model. Yes, we have found a very rich uranium, uranium mineralization uh, in the depth between uh, 1,700 and, and, and uh, 1,500. And the third achievement is uh, we, we have acquired a lot, lot of data, gravity and magnetics, and this is quite useful for future mineral uh, exploration. We also test the integrated geophysical method for the deep mineral uh, target. This is a, uh, uh, so one example. We, we have generated a larger data set. Uh, such large scale gravity magnet data is quite contributing importantly to future mineral exploration. We, we, so, uh, so we also test the modern technologies in the uh, deep mineral exploration, so such, such as uh, we newly found the nickel deposit. Uh, so this is a shashi proper deposit. We also uh, test a lot, a lot of modern geophysical method. Uh, so that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Liu. I'm Simon Klemperer. I'm a professor of geophysics at Stanford University. And it's been my privilege to work in Shizang, that is Tibet, for the last 20 years with collaborators from the Chinese Academy of Geological Sciences, and in the last few years as a formal collaborator of the Sinoprobe project. Sinoprobe has allowed me and my students uh, a role in helping to design their experiments and full access to the data that we've thereby collected. With the 2008-2012 preliminary Sinoprobe project that you've heard described, China has taken a place at the top table of nations committed to modern and detailed exploration of the continental lithosphere. If the phase two Sinopro program is funded, China will leapfrog past Europe, will leapfrog past the USA in the quality, the quantity, the density of the scientific observations that it makes. It's important that where the top scientists in China offer global leadership, the political leaders in China must not be afraid to follow and commit to full and open sharing of data across the global community, because it is only by this full and open sharing of data that the full value of these impressive and expensive observations will be realized. But today we're here to talk about science, and let me reiterate that I've had a very productive collaboration with my colleagues in Shizang, and we have exciting new results being presented at this meeting. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Mian Liu. I'm a professor uh, at the University of Missouri. Uh, in the past few years, I have been working with a group of American geologists and geophysicists uh, collaborating with Sano Probe. And as Simon said, we have been very productive. Uh, one good example I can give you is that the Sano Probe runs a uh, major reflection, seismic ref ref reflection profiles. And as uh, US partners, we brought in our own recording instrument. And so we don't have to worry about all the uh, big cost uh, part of the operation. We can just put down our instrument collecting data, doing something that the Sino probe uh, is not doing. So we uh, add the value at no cost. Uh, another th that's another thing about Sino probe is changing the US uh, China collaboration in major earth science research. In the past, uh, when we work in China, the US team typically have to ship uh, instrument to China, very, very expensive. Uh, these days, the Chinese partners are providing most of the instrument and logistics support that allow us to work together on huge projects at a very minimum cost to the US uh, taxpayers. So that's very important for us. Thank you. Okay, do we have any questions from the floor? Hi, Steve Benko from Physics Today magazine. Um, it's an impressive array of instrumentation. I mean, wow. <laughs> um, a, a major component of it seems to be the magnetotelluric array of sensors. Could you tell us a little bit about how those sensors work and what it is they exactly measure? Yeah, so no, I'm Sano probably a PI, but I'm a geologist. So, <laughs> so it's uh, MNTs and uh, so very huge and cover all the continent and uh, with different intensities. Well, for the cover all the continent only is uh, very testing and uh, in a uh, testing for standard of uh, point uh, four degree by four degree only in the first phases. I hope in the next phase we cover all the continent and about one degree and one degree. So in the first phases we just testing and two area in the South, North China and the Tibetan by more densities for. So this is uh, your questions very professionals. I. I think maybe it's our, uh, maybe it's, and uh, you give is uh, si uh, Simon's give is uh, interpret. Thank you. Let me just add: yeah. these are standard magnetotelluric observations using uh, three component, yeah. three orthogonal measurements of the magnetic field, and two orthogonal components of the electric field. These sorts of measurements are made worldwide, and indeed, are a small component of the U.S. array of the USA's EarthScope project. What is remarkable here is Sinoprobe's commitment to deploying these stations on a regular and dense basis across the entire continent. Are they, these, these, are surf, these are surface measurements. Yeah. They show changing electric and magnetic fields responding to changing ionospheric conditions that allow us to probe the electrical resistivity of the deep Earth. They are very sensitive to the presence of metals, for the metallogenic exploration that Lu Qingtian explained, and for observing magmas and other fluids in the crust. Uh, yes, this is Randy Shostak. I'm a reporter with EOS, newspaper of the American Geophysical Union. Uh, earlier, uh, Dr. Klemperer, you mentioned that uh, the next phase of Sinoprobe uh, could leapfrog uh, China past the US and other efforts. Uh, could you give me some specifics in how that, in what would actually be leapfrogged. Uh, and also related to that, um, 
Is it a sure thing that uh, the next phase will be funded? So I'm going to try and address the first part of that question, <laughs> the ways in which Sinoprobe phase two would alter the landscape. Lao Dong started his talk by showing the network of reflection profiles collected by the CoCorp program in the US starting over 30 years ago. The total length of reflection profile collected over a 20-year period was a lot less than 5,000 kilometers, I believe. Already in five years, Sinoprobe preliminary project has collected that same amount of profiling. Reflection profiling is the highest resolution method we have to image inside the crust, to see the structures, uh, to see the sedimentary basins, to see the features that control and define the evolution of the near outer layers of the Earth. Sinoprobe phase two would dramatically increase that component in particular, I believe, and allow China to become the best studied region of continental crust. So the, that's all opinions, and I only is from Simon. So from our side, I, I think a lot of to learn from and the United States and experience. So we, we buy all the machines and uh, export from the United States. So, and also, so we just uh, learn from as uh, expert for United States and uh, Germany and uh, all the co all the in the globe is the mines and uh, wise mining so for our side problem and uh, support. But next phases and uh, uh, is also is just the proceeding of the evalu evaluations. If our first phases and the past evaluation by the government. We just discuss what times we start and next phases. So uh, it's a long way uh, to go, yeah. Thank you. Do we have any further questions from the floor? Can we have a follow-up question? Uh, yes, on another topic that was brought up earlier about uh, um, open sharing of data. I'm wondering if you could please talk about uh, problems and that, that there have been or uh, concerns about that related to Sinoprobe? Uh, th this is obviously a, a, a difficult question, uh, but it is, it's my perception that there are political leaders in China who believe that broadband seismic data in particular should be, remain a national secret. I believe that is not the opinion of the scientists involved, but they are to some extent controlled by the political leadership in China. This is a view that is held by some other nations on Earth as well, but it's one to which essentially all US scientists are deeply opposed and do not believe that any state secrets could be compromised by the release of campaign broadband data. It is our experience in the US through the IRIS experiment in the last 25 years that the democratization of science is what has led to the greatest advances the open sharing of data to allow the brightest minds worldwide to work on US data and show US scientists how better to interpret our own results. Cool. So, okay, that's a question for us. So I know. So uh, it's, uh, our silo probably is, uh, we just make is uh, regulations beginning our, our silo probably in uh, 2008. There's a special and uh, climate of the open and the sharing of our data. For now, uh, according to our uh, and, uh, regulations, for after uh, fi uh, when after uh, finished and started probably two years, the all data maybe is and open, special open for the Chinese and the different university and also for the foreigner. Foreigner is uh, special for our cooperation project and uh, so for organizing an institute and uh, for some uh, service and also so got uh, easy to get as uh, data. And uh, then we just open free so for everyone uh, after two years, yeah. Let me uh, add a little bit to this. Uh, in uh, the, the, situation, the situation in China actually uh, is changing every day. And uh, is uh, I think it's much better than uh, than a few years ago. 
Uh, so in, there is two issues. One is policy, one is culture. Uh, in policies from the central government to Sino probe, uh, it's very clear that data will be open, and actually Sino probe is in the process of building uh, a major uh, data center to collecting and distributing all the data. Uh, there is also a, a cultural thing, you, you know, uh, people typically don't like to freely share their data, but a Sino probe is doing a, a much better job on this regard, on this regard because it made clear from the beginning that all the data has to come back to Sino probe and to be shared. And so, except a few potentially sensitive data like continuous seismic monitoring in the uh, northeastern part of China where you, know, you can have potentially use with the nuclear test of, uh, in North Korea, other data uh, in principle will be shared. And uh, in the past few years, when we collaborate with Sinoprobe, the U.S. scientists and the students has no problem accessing Chinese data. Do we have any other further questions? Okay, well, thank you very much for your presentation, and thanks everyone for being here to participate. Um, our next press conference will be at 1.30 on the Chelyabinsk airburst, and we hope you'll come and participate in that.